Hello, welcome to Studio Pixel. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about the caustics in 3ds Max. Now, caustics are a really, really uh, nice effect or create an added uh, value to your scene while you are rendering a, a, a either reflective objects or a refractive objects or the ray traced. So, I have already created a scene over here and this is the outcome with it. And here you can see this area which has been generated through the caustics because this kind of effect here you can find in your in your real, real world very uh, normally through the glass objects or reflective objects or refractive objects. So here I am also creating the same thing uh, in 3ds Max. So let's see what are the main important points to uh, to create this this kind of effect. Okay. So I have created uh, a torus knot and I'm just uh, deleting it, delete the, uh, all the objects from here because uh, when you are creating a new scene, there are few points that you have to uh, remember. Okay, so I'm just deleting this. Okay, so first create a torus knot. Let's see, or any kind of, it's actually uh, caustics is caustics are really really dependent on the shape of the objects also so if you take a torus knot it will get you will get a different kind of result you will if you create a a vase it will give you a different kind of result if you if you you know take a teapot it will it will definitely give you a different kind of result so uh, one is that object another one i need that a target spotlight fine okay so if i hit render with the normal scene now first of all i would like to say that uh, you cannot render caustics in your default scanline render so we have to change to uh, change our render to do to the mentor ray so i have already changed with the uh, mentor ray option and i'll just uh, switch off the caustics uh, as i have already created the scene so it is uh, by default that has been enabled but in general it, this caustics option is uh, disabled so uh, you need to switch on them but before that you need to understand few things okay so if you render now you will see oops sorry if you render now you can see this is simple objects and uh, there is only one objects over there and light okay so first we have to create the material I have already created the material if you uh, like to I'm not going to in details how to create the glass material over here you can find it in our uh, creating glass uh, in 3ds max uh, tutorial but it's a very simple down the opacity and you put ray trace on the reflection and refraction map so that's it so select the object and okay apply now if you hit render you can see uh, the effect of the glass has been put on but the shadow and the caustics are not yet been done so first of all I have to uh, activate the shadow option over here I would like to use the mental ray shadow over here mental ray shadow map as I'm uh, rendering with the mental ray, I definitely be preferred the mental ray shadow calculation. So that I've been switch on, and it has been created as expected. But yet, as I haven't switch on the caustics on the render setup, uh, there is no caustics has been uh, shown up. So first of all, uh, I would like to switch on the caustics from the render settings I enable the caustics by default uh, these are something like uh, 100 and the maximum sampling radius are generally switched off so no problem uh, don't follow uh, these uh, these options right now you just uh, hit enable the caustics and whenever you start rendering you are going to get some error message okay 
Now, there are two different points of this. This is very, very important. You have to read this error message over here. There are no caustic photon generators in this scene. Make sure at least one object is set to generate caustics in the object properties dialog. Fine. The second one, there are no caustics photon emitters in the scene. Make sure at least one light object is set to emit caustics in the object parameters dialog. So there are two different options that we need to uh, understand. One is the photon generator and one is the photon emitter. So these two points are really, really important. Either way, you have to on it. Otherwise, you are not going to see the effect. So you just have to cancel this. So first, I'll just right click on the object and go to the object parameter. And switch on the generate caustics option, and that's why I recre. I don't. I don't just. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, start with the uh, scene that I have already created because whenever you create new objects and you don't switch on the generate caustic from here, you will get these kind of uh, these uh, absolutely this particular error message from Mental Ray, and that is why I have created this object, these objects and the light uh, both. It, with fresh so hit ok don't cross it hit ok because this is very important if you cross it it's not actually been generated so you have to hit ok fine number one even right now if you have if you are trying to uh, hit render you will see the same error message saying there is no photonometers because I haven't done with them with my lights so right click object properties and again generate caustics and hit ok so these are the two different two important points that we have to uh, understand that one is the photon emitter and a, another another one is the uh, caustic generator so these two have to uh, switch on the generate caustics on option on from their their properties so right now if I hit render you can see already the caustics calculation has been started and it has started in a very very rough way so if you are satisfied with this output then it's fine otherwise you can manipulate few options that th those are which are really really important now first of all uh, I'll go through the um, maybe the caustics options okay now first of all the maximum number of photons or the samples you can see the spots over there these are the these are the photon samples that has been created through this objects and the light so if you want to increase uh, to you know uh, make some more detailing you can increase from here and which is which actually leads you to the uh, maximum you know you know the uh, it, it, which actually cost you f for the rendering time also so you have to be very optimized over here that how much samples you are really want to put and then another one is the maximum sampling radius in general the maximum sampling radius is say to one according to your unit setup and if you hit render now for that scene you can see the spots has been properly been shown as as the sampling radius are very small now whenever I'm increasing the sampling radius they are actually mixing up with each other and forming that particular uh, caustic effect so here I would definitely happy with the uh, uh, 10 value of the maximum sampling radius and if you hit render you will see the results are coming out really really easy You can see this portion has one already been merged up with the with all the you know uh, the small radius of the caustics, and the rest of the options are uh, really uh, been done, also been done. Cool. Fine. We don't need to render all the scene though. Okay, fine. But the, still, the scene is quite a bit dull because we generally see the caustics are really really glowing thing so for that thing you need to work on the on the light properties in in 3s max now under the light properties 
you will have the amended ray indirect illumination as the caustics is a part of the global illumination uh, sorry the indirect illumination uh, the caustics and the, sorry the photon calculation is under the indirect illumination you will find that so by default it's uh, head to the automatic calculation and i hope this auto this i i forget to you know uh, put it on default default values as default is the automatic calculation and in generally we don't like the uh, uh, automatic calculation made by the software you can see it's already been very really really blown up uh, thing so i i'm just stopping it because uh, this is unnecessary to render uh, this much of uh, entire Seen. So I don't want automatic calculation for the photon and uh, photons. I would hit to the manual settings. The last uh, render that I've been shown you was the manual settings where the where I have already merged up the photon uh, photon points over there, and I just need to uh, you know the glow glow the things up. So just hit render for in any case it just uh, you know makes up. So that was a scene that we actually rendered through the uh, manual settings in by default default values. Fine. Now I need to you know increase this these glow effects over here. So for uh, for glowing effects or the glowing uh, intensity to increase the intensity of that particular uh, uh, caustic points so over there, we need to decrease the decay. Now, if you increase the decay, the amount will be, you know, uh, dull. And if you decrease the decay, uh, it will be something that is, uh, you know, uh, will uh, will intensify up the the entire uh, caustic points. So I'll hit up 1.75 maybe, because a uh, very small amount of uh, decreasing also, in, you know, trigger up a very large amount of, you know, uh, brightness. So be careful about this. Hit render and let's see yes it's almost done so here you can see that uh decreasing my dk to 1.75 is actually creating my you know my glowing effect very perfectly for my for my scene so this is how you can actually increase now if you increase the caustic photon a uh, number you can increase it from here also like like but don't i uh, know here just hit a, another zero and increase the number to 1000 to 10000 because that will lead to a, a huge number of render time uh, difference uh, so just uh, make sure that if you if you are into the uh, thousand uh, ten thousand it definitely make it uh, uh, maybe two thousand uh, sorry twenty thousand over here something like that or maybe one thousand five hundred uh, sorry ten thousand uh, fifteen thousand something uh, uh, like that don't uh, just whoop up the whoosh up the entire value to a some abrupt uh, which can lead you you know uh, to a really greater amount of rendering time without any effect so be very careful about that i'm just hitting render with caustic photons over here and you can also in intensify the energy value over here so i'm just uh, increasing the, my caustic photons over here you can leave the gi photons because i'm not calculating uh, my gi options over here so we didn't need to uh, calculate now you have to remember one thing there's difference between the energy value and the caustic photons the number of photons for the caustics is increasing not the brightness or the in intensity of that if you increase the energy of that particular photons then only you can see the a very great amount of intensity has been raised so you have to be very very click uh, careful over here to use that okay i i just uh, give you a comparison over these these two images uh, Go to render and compare with the RAM player. I'm just uh, uh, okay. I'm putting it into one channel, and after that, just uh, leaving it over here and make sure it's a one. And I also start to render this scene again. Okay, why I'm this in uh, why I'm showing you this is a really, a really uh, interesting thing that how the caustic photons number of caustic photons will you know differ in in the in this entire scene so uh, just let me finish the render cool 
so right now I will just uh, put it on V here you can see this one is like uh, uh, like 20,000 and this one is absolutely 10,000 so you can see that the differences this one is uh, 20,000 and 10,000 the difference is clear that 20,000 sorry 10,000 values is completely a different thing and the 20,000 is a completely different thing you can see the spreadness of the of the, of the particular uh, 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 caustic points and here you can see the intensity of the caustic points has been increased uh, rather rather spreading out because my number of caustics are really really low over here so these are the factors that you need to understand over here and uh, Act according to your requirements of the scene, which is which is uh, much more, uh, you know, um, up to your uh, destination or desired results. So uh, these are the all all the different options that you need to understand from here. And I hope you hope you got the got the point of uh, different uh, uh, sides of the, using the caustics. The number one is definitely your uh, object material which should be uh, either cost either, either reflective or refractive uh, and uh, definitely you have to use a spotlight over here and uh, the why I use spotlight one one point that I really like to you know explain over here just uh, closing this down okay now why I put this uh, you know a spotlight over here because uh, caustics generally works on the spotlights really really nicely because it's acting like a gun the the it's actually guiding the photons to to travel through the uh, to the object which is really really important because if I decrease my uh, even the uh, let's go to the spotlight parameters okay now if I decrease my entire spotlight size and if I hit render you can see the intensity of the particular uh, uh, just finish to uh, just wait for the render to be finished yeah now you can see I haven't changed my you know caustic parameters anyway but yet it has been uh, you know intensity has been really really up for this for these particular objects so why this has happened because my um, after emitting from the light the objects uh, the sorry the photons has been guided clearly towards the object now this is really really important and interesting one to whenever you are uh, creating your object and your light you have to be very very careful that lights are not been waste now if I increase my size over here like this you can see now through what is happening as I'm say that this is a kind of a, a photon gun and if you are shooting through the gun few photons will be wasted throughout this area and that's why uh, the initial photons will not be hit over this particular object and also not create the caustics as as we actually been thought let's see hit render and you can see I haven't changed a single point of the uh, the caustic parameters and you can see the immediate decrease of the com ca caustic effect in your in your scene so this is a really really important factor for for the caustics in 3ds max whether you are you are using what kind of light you are using how you are going to guide that that light particular to, towards towards your object is also a very very important point for this so um, hope you uh, overall understand the idea of uh, creating the caustics over here so hope you enjoy this thank you very much and please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also put a, a question if you want to ask in your you know you know in the comment section of our website and uh, like us on Facebook and also follow us on Twitter and don't forget to download free 3d models from our uh, website that is a new section that I've been added and uh, we are also coming with uh, a, a lot of free stuffs like textures and uh, character rigs also so check it out thank you very much